All right, we're ready. Okay, do you need to let the one public in? Yep, let me let him in. Okay. Okay. All right, well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being patient with uh, technical issues. We're gonna kick off the March 10th, 2022 Airport Advisory Board, hopefully last virtual meeting for a while. Um, Michelle, do you mind starting off and calling the roll, please? I don't. Uh, Chairman Earl? Here. And board members, Jordan? Here. Dean? Here. Robeson? Here. Talis? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm not gonna attempt your last name. Uh, and Bliss? Here. Council Member Martin? Here. Okay, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, first item on our agenda, as always, is our first public invited to be heard. Um, I know we have one member of the public with us. I don't know if you would like to speak, make a comment now at the end, or just listen in. It doesn't look like he has a microphone. Okay. I'm... I'll move on then, and if I am wrong and I've missed something, um, hold on, I see connecting to audio there. Okay, well, I'm gonna move on, and if we need to come back to that or we'll have the other comment at the end, um, I just don't wanna not have some of the opportunity. Um, our next agenda item is approval of the minutes, which we're deferring um, since we don't have minutes available. So we will go right on to old business, which is our financial update. And I don't know who I'm throwing it to in the city staff uh, to kick that off. I'm, I'm happy to um, do that. So uh, Chairman Earl, uh, members of the airport board, Joni Marsh, assistant city manager. So I have been working with our accounting staff here the last couple of days to kind of get some information um, end of year, starting new year. But one thing you did ask, um, I believe last meeting was to have a recap on the revenues for 2021 and where we had projected and where we ended up. Um, and they were able to get that to me today. So in 2021, we had a projected revenue of $950,922. 400,000 of that, so a pretty good chunk of that is the state grant for the Southside Utility Project. And where we ended up um, was a little over a million dollars, so 1,007,540. Um, and I think a lot of that, about $59,000 of that was a, the grant that we received, a federal grant that was not in the original projections. And we also have a little bit of an uptick um, not much, but a slight uptick in hangar lease revenue. And then we also had a public use permit fee, um, which I think predominantly would be um, from skydiving that was higher than anticipated. So that's kind of where we've ended up. There might be some additional adjustments I was told today by finance. Um, I think what I will try to do is have the um, finance put this in a format for everyone that I could bring back for you to, to see in the, in the April meeting. And then for 2022, just so you know, it, um, the projections that were in the budget system um, were at about $617,000 is our projected revenue for 2022. And obviously that doesn't take into account some of the additional funding that we've um, come to learn in the last months that we'll be getting an allocation um, annually for the next five years, plus any additional grants that we've applied for. Joni, if I may, I believe uh, that this year's budget does include the $54,000 grant from CDOT for the pavement uh, marking project. I do see that, Jeff. Thank you. So that just hopefully gives you a little update of where we um, are looking to. And I think it's important to update those revenue projections, knowing that we'll see some additional funding that um, to the airport. Um, in 2022. So I will work with the finance team to see if they can assist and perhaps put this in a format that's a little more digestible than some of our reporting. 
Um, and then also month to date um, through Monday for expenditures, our annual 22 operating budget um, is about $577,085. Um, and we've expended about 46,900 of that budget. So pretty lean so far this year. We do have some outstanding invoices, of course, for snow, snow plowing that haven't come through. Um, and then remember, we have a pretty large salary savings because we currently are not, um, don't have any staff for the two FTE that are in our budget. So that number will change once we get folks on board. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Joni and Jeff, for that. Um, I'll just note for the record, it looks like Steve Bliss joined us. Steve, good evening. Um, what questions does anyone have um, for Joni or Jeff on the budget? Quick question. Oh, yeah, for Jeff, how much did our, this current snowstorm end up costing us? I'm just curious. And how much have we used for snow removal so far? So I believe we've uh, of the the budget expenses for third party contractor and excavating. I believe we've used about half of the budget this year uh, on that. What uh, the city has been trying to do in managing those expenses is uh, on these storms that only put down an inch or two of snow is to do all of the snow removal utilizing city staff uh, so that uh, we aren't having to tap into the third party and excavating uh, for that service. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions from anyone? The, um, the budget, if it's, if I understood correctly, the we were at uh, 950,000 last year. Is it, did I understand correct? 577,000 for this year. So considerably lower. Um, that was because realize, of the $400,000 state grant last because year. Because of the grant. This year. And that was anticipated. That was already accounted for in that. Gotcha. Okay. And then I, I think the long fall that just never ended uh, helped with skydiving. Now they haven't been able to much since it's been so cold, but I would guess that the, um, the increase on the permits was all that good weather uh, extended their season. So that's good. Joni, Jeff, on, on the skydiving question, um, last year, and this was last summer, we voted to recommend a change in the rate for some of those permit fees. I don't believe that ever moved forward to council. Um, and I don't know, it was delayed for a while and I honestly don't know the whole backstory. Is, is that gonna be revisited at some point um, given that there was a, you know, at least a recommendation from this group for council to consider the adjustment? Chairman Earl, so yeah, I do, I guess I do recall that that went forward. Um, the city attorney's office and the city manager had some significant questions about some of uh, the um, options for council in terms of fee and rate changes. So they asked that that item not be forwarded. And then uh, unfortunately we were able to um, wrap that up um, in a timely manner. And so that will need to be revisited once we get a new airport manager hired and we'll bring that back to you. But that did not go beyond the city attorney's office. Yeah, I definitely like to make sure we're just on top of that kind of annual rate increase in general. Other questions from anybody right now? Okay, hearing none then, um, next item is listed here as board consideration of Robert's Rules of Order, which is really an amendments to our bylaws. Um, you all have received a copy of these bylaws I believe it was on Thursday or Friday of last week. Um, I'm gonna pull them up if that's okay with everyone and just walk through them. Um, if that works for the city staff is a good approach here and then we can address questions as needed. Um, I will note here, Talis and I both had review on this. Russell gave a phenomenal, uh, really detailed view and caught a lot of my typos. 
as well as significant help from the city attorney's office um, in putting this together. So, you know, just want to kind of recognize that upfront. And then I'm going to try to do a screen share, which is always a little bit dangerous, but hopefully folks can see a Word doc here with, uh, with everything. Okay. So really, I'm just gonna walk through these quickly and then we can open it up for questions and discussions on any specific thing anyone has. First section here, all we really did was add the ability to have remote attendance in our meetings. Um, clearly it's something we were doing, so made it reflect that. We also cleaned up a little bit of wording where we were missing words in the prior version. Under voting, first sentence here, I think was a grammatical mess. Um, and Russell was kind enough to suggest more effective, cleaner wording. Um, similarly, uh, I made the adjustments in here. This was the only place we had gendered terms. So make them a little bit more generic around the member shall disclose their interest and that any conflict of interest is subject to all uh, applicable city and state laws in addition from the city attorney's office. We did talk through both proceedings and rules and procedures um, when we got together, this must have been our January or February meeting, probably January meeting. We, in, in consultation with the city attorney's office, adjusted old business and new business to reflect informational items and action items. And the idea here is really to separate out some of those items like say a financial update where we're actually not making a vote, but it is a discussion item where we can talk through it with city staff amongst ourselves, ask questions um, and, and kind of inform the broader group versus these action items, which is what we're doing right this moment where we will eventually be taking a vote on approving these bylaws. It also makes it really clear what we're expected to be doing as a board. Um, in each section. So we know pretty clearly what our expectations are. Rules of procedure, we talked through this in depth um, that we kept the Roberts rules of order as we decided as a group. We did add a sentence in here that if they're not strictly followed and we rarely strictly follow them because it's just not as necessary for us that that doesn't actually invalidate anything we do if we, we mess it up a little bit along the way. We did put in for the first time the public invited to be heard, um, which has been practice, but has not been actually part of our bylaws. And so this was not only put in, but also the five minutes that we voted on back in January up from the current practice of three minutes. Duties of officers. We originally had suggested that the chairperson would have the duty of setting the agenda for all meetings of the board. In discussions with the city, we actually can't direct the city uh, staff on how to do that. So we collaborate with them and set the agenda together. Um, and the airport manager is still responsible for preparing the agenda and packet all the materials for, for our meetings. Last change here, we change the annual report from the first meeting of February that we deliver it, since I, at least in the four-ish years I've been doing this, we've never met that timeline, to the first half of the year um, in accordance with what we're required to do in Longmont Municipal Code. So both gives us a little bit of time, but also recognizes that we're unlikely to always hit an ideal meeting with city council schedule. Um, I believe that's the only other change you'll see. There's a addition of a number in addition to um, the Word five there, but I'm pretty sure that's all we have. What questions, anything anyone want to kind of discuss and go through this before, um, you know, the ultimate action here will be a motion to adopt these new bylaws. Any discussion? City staff, is there anything I missed calling out that is worth pointing out here? Chairman Earl, I don't see anything. Um, I know Atasi is also here this evening, so um, following along. So I'll defer to her if she sees anything. Um, 
I, I believe that you addressed all of the changes. Thank you. Really, no questions, guys? It looks good. Okay. I, I'm going to take that as a positive, I guess. It looks good. Yep. Absent any questions, would anyone like to make a motion to adopt these bylaws? I'll make a motion on that. I'll second it. Okay. Malcolm, do you mind making saying what the motion is? Motion to adopt the new uh, amended bylaws? So I would say we motion to adopt the new amended bylaws. Steve, you still second that? I still second that emotion. Thank you. Uh, no other comments? Uh, did did I say emotion, by the way? You meant motion. <laughs> I figured both. It was okay. Okay. Thank you. We've now got a provision about this strictly following Robert's rules, so I figured I, I, we were okay at that point. Um, all those in favor, can you please raise your hand? Malcolm, you're not on video, so I'll ask you to either say aye or nay. Uh, aye. Thank you. Nobody uh, opposed. No one didn't raise their hand there. So motion carries. We will, um, I will go ahead and sign and we'll adopt these as our new bylaws going forward for next meeting forward. So nice again- Nice work. Very nice work, you guys. Yeah, well done. Thank you um, all for the comments, the feedback on this, especially again, though, Talis for working with me on the initial draft, Russell, for a very thorough editing um, and city staff, of course, Atasi and Chris for actually making it legal. So thank you all. We'll move, we'll move along to, sorry, Steve, yeah. Can I ask one question? Uh, yeah. Looking at my schedule for the rest, rest of the year, I'll be in I'll be in Europe and maybe uh, for two meetings. Uh, with that in mind, I can I can still enter the the meeting on Zoom in Europe. Is that correct? According to your, if we're having a virtual meeting, I believe that would be correct. How about uh, a phone um, representation? So I, I would defer to city staff because I don't remember what the city's electronic participation policy is exactly, which would I think mm -hmm. govern that. But uh, the other question, Steve, would be, are we meeting virtually or in person? And I think there's a reasonable chance we'll be back to in-person meetings. Uh, the reason I ask that is because I was on another board and I was out of town and I did enter the meeting by phone and they had a speaker up so that I could hear everyone speaking at the, at the uh, meeting. Would that be possible? We've at least not done hybrid meetings, but Joni and Michelle, I defer to you guys. So council has decided, has done away with um, hybrid meetings um, and their in-person meetings. So they don't have anybody calling in. Uh, it's, it was really difficult when they did that um, for staff to try and get that all hooked up. So I would say no. It wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to attend those meetings virtually if the if we are in person. Oh, oh I see. Okay, I understand. Yeah. That's it. Thanks, Steve. So I'm going to move us on to probably our last time we have new business on the agenda and uh, Joni for a hiring update. Sure, thank you, Harrison. So, um, so we have not uh, made an offer yet. I've done some additional, um, had some additional conversations this week and anticipate um, finishing up next week. Uh, our hiring process does require a background check and a drug screen prior to actually onboarding anyone um, and before we would make a public announcement. So those are also things that um, in a perfect world are quick, but most often take up to two weeks. So um, mine and Jeff's goal is to um, have that figured out and by your April meeting, have someone on board. So um, I think Melinda gave a very uh, good analogy in, a, in some conversation around how the hiring process is going this, this 
these days. So even if you find a qualified candidate or maybe three, you got to land one of them. So um, that's also um, on my mind because I've had that happen in a few other departments where we um, have offered the job and on and we're on try three now to hire someone for a position. So it's definitely become difficult, but I'm actually optimistic. So as soon as I'm able to release it, I will email you all as a board so you know. Cool. Joni, would, would you mind, before I open up for comments, just given a brief you know, recap of the, you know, we had three candidates that had public meetings. Um, was it last week, week before? Um, and I know a lot of board members weren't able to attend and I think it would be helpful just to kind of recap at least what those were about how they were attended. Um, yeah. Just some basics. Happy to do that. And thank you to um, yourself, Harrison, to Steve, and to Russell for attending all of the meet and greets. It was much, it was very good to see you all there. And I know Marcia was able to attend a couple of them. Um, so we did uh, invite all the candidates back. We had a series of interview panels um, with additional um, city staff. Uh, the city manager also had an interview with, he, with each candidate, and then we came over to the FBO and um, gave each candidate the opportunity to introduce themselves and to answer questions and kind of get up before the, the group and uh, hear what people were curious about um, at the airport about what they might do in that position. I would say they were all kind of equally attended, and I would say we had roughly Sometimes I overcount in my head, but I would say we had at least 15 people yeah, in each one. That's what I would say, yeah. Yeah. So I, it was great to see some folks from not just the airport board, but other airport users um, come out to um, ask some tough questions and see who we were putting up before um, for the uh, ultimate airport manager position. And I've been following up with Harold this week. Um, as I said, you know, he did his own interview with each candidate, so just trying to get some feedback from him as well. Um, but I, actually, I think it went really well, and I was glad to see that there was some attendance. Um, who knew it would be standing room only, but I forgot how small the FBO was too, so. Anyone, uh, any board members questions or comments on, on the update? Russell. Thank you, Chairman. Um, since I was at all of them, I figured I'd just give you guys um, a short synopsis of each candidate. I thought Joni might, but since she didn't, uh, here's what I wrote down. Um, the first one is a uh, former Leadville, Colorado airport manager and currently the chief pilot for an operation at Centennial. Uh, the second guy is more of a big city guy, let's say. He, uh, his last job was in Renton, Washington, um, working in the operations department there. And the third candidate, um, let's see what I wrote. He uh, is the youngest, I believe. Um, but despite that youth, he has uh, more experience than I expected with um, aviation management, corporate real estate. And he was the uh, airport manager in central Illinois for several years before applying to this job. Thank you. Thanks, Russell. I'm I appreciate the recap and it was helpful to get some of your thoughts too, since I missed out on the last candidate when we talked earlier this week. And I can go further with, uh, you know, what I heard from around the room. If, if anybody's interested in that, I don't know how much we want to get into it. I, I think everyone got peppered pretty good with questions from the community, <laughs> at least yeah. in the ones I was in. Uh, Steve, please. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm really disappointed. I missed that. But I was out of town. It was my birthday, and you know sometimes you can't you can't uh, sidetrack that when somebody's making other arrangements. But uh, my question is: Are one of them is is a pilot? Are the other two pilots as well? It's my understanding that they're not. No, no. The Just, third candidate uh, said he had a strong desire to become a pilot, but not yet. But only the first guy from uh, Leadville is the, is the current pilot. And correct me if I'm wrong, the second was an air, a military air traffic controller, is that correct? Correct, correct. yeah, tower control. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Was the public 
um, I, I guess what was the takeaway from the questions the public asked? And I thought I saw that Lopa had a meeting afterwards and maybe reviewed it as well, but I haven't seen anything come back from that. Um, do you feel like the, the pilot committee showed up with good questions and do you think it helped clarify things? Do you feel it took it in the right direction? I guess I could weigh in on that, uh, Jeff, if you want to as well. Um, the public was least kind to the youngest candidate. I'll say that. Um, as soon as you walked in the room, you could hear the old guy start muttering, as I told mm. Harrison earlier today. But like I mentioned, uh, he has a, a surprising amount of experience for his apparent youth. And I thought he was by far the best communicator, clearest spoken and mm. best calm responses to Ron peppering him with his uh, unhappiness, basically. Okay. <laughs> and I stayed for the local meeting too. I believe that they voted to say, we don't want any of these guys oh. and to start over. With, oh. Which, uh, you know, I, just, I was just kind of listening at that point, but. They, uh, if they had to, they told their head uh, Lopa guy that they liked the first candidate because he was a local Colorado person. Yeah, and Leadville handles a lot of um, military stuff like we do. And um, that is interesting. Is he the same guy that signs our certificates? I don't have mine where I can see it. Um, when we land up there, the uh, that's interesting. I'm, I'm sorry that they didn't feel like any of the candidates were um, there. That's that's tough. You got to work with what we've got, and uh, you know it's just a starting starting point when you bring somebody in. That's the beginning of the journey, not the end. So, is that what they ended? Some, is that what they ended up sending to you, Jeff? Was that they wanted to start over? I, I don't remember specifically uh, Lopez. I can tell you that the comments that I solicited to those people that RSVP'd that the input was quite varied to what you had mentioned, several people saying, you know, none of them, and some was all different ones. So there, there was not, um, I just got a lot of different input. So hmm. and as, as I have conveyed to Joni and the city, I think all three of them are qualified in different ways and would bring different strengths uh, to the table. I don't, I don't think the city would go wrong uh, with hiring any one of the three and they'll get different uh, values out of one or the other. Yeah. Steve, go ahead. Um, what were some of the big objections? Were there any? The people that said that people weren't qualified just said they weren't qualified. No, nothing specific. Wow. Steve, I obviously didn't see the comments that were sent to Jeff, so I can't comment on that, but a lot of the questions were what you would expect. Um, I think in some of the meetings, they were leading questions, and frankly, I was actually, some of my comments back to Jeff were focused on how people answered the questions and dealt with, I'd say, a little bit of combative um, you know, lines of attack from, from the community. Because uh, I think that actually showed a lot of what their character was like. So I, I, I found it illuminating to see how they would reply to that. Because we know, you know, even in these meetings, there's a lot of there's a lot of commentary from us and from the public in all directions. And certainly in the day to day, they're going to get that. So I, I actually found I found the exercise really valuable to see how they were going to reply to respond to some of that. I do appreciate that opportunity. I was also unable to attend uh, any of them. I thought maybe I could catch Thursday, but I wasn't able to. But that was really a, um, a welcome process from the city. And um, it took a bit to put that together, I know. And I just appreciate that, that some of you were able to exercise that, uh, that chance to go participate like that. That's, uh, I, that feels very new and unique in the hiring process. So um, that was a step, a step forward. Uh, for sure. So appreciate that. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. I really hope we don't have to do this again for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. If, if we do, I, I'm sure we would all have a little feedback on that, but I really appreciate that we were brought into it and could provide that input. And the public, even, you know, Absolutely. it may have just yeah. uh, created, uh, hopefully not a distraction, but at least, um, at least they got 
uh, they saw. <laughs> we do want to attract a candidate, but uh, at least they heard what was going on and what was on people's minds. So it's a fair fight. Anything else there before we uh, before we move on? Dallas, yeah. I have a question. Do you guys think that the uh, group that you spoke with uh, would ever be satisfied with anyone? <laughs> Sorry. I belong. I'm a dues paying member. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I apologize for laughing. I really shouldn't have. But I, I will just say that um, all three of these candidates are past airport managers. They are used to airport crowds. And every uh, airport tenant crowd had the cantankerous ones that can never be happy and some that uh, just like to stir the pot. Uh, I did feel like that there were some good, good questions asked by several people um, and fair questions uh, in the audience and some that just wanted to complain. Um, so, uh, yeah. I got Hopefully. a quick question for you, Jeff. Uh, it seemed like the week of the interviews, you know, the, the email said, we're interviewing these two guys Monday and Thursday, we're gonna decide Friday, so you gotta get your comments in. And now, you know, it's gonna be another three, four weeks before we decide what, what changed there. I'll let Johnny respond. Yeah. Um, thanks, uh, Commissioner Robeson. So, um, you know, it's not an easy decision. So, um, as Jeff said, I thought we had three good candidates. There were some, um, there were lots of feedback from not just city staff, but also the city manager on where we're headed with this hire. Um, and also I, you know, part of this is up to me and I've had a, a, a number of um, other items that have really needed my attention in the past week. So part of that is simply my own workload interfering with getting things completed. Um, so I will take the blame for that. Okay, I'm not that there's any blame, I just, yeah. Um, you know, I understand that you have to land them, like you said earlier, but just surprised by the change in the timeline. So thanks for that. See if you have a question for Jeff. Are you still on board then until a decision is made? Uh, my contract uh, is through the end of March. I've indicated to the city that I will remain to support them, but I'm not going to be able to at the same level um, uh, after April 1. So if, if it's coming up every other week um, or doing more remote type work, um, happy to continue supporting. Uh, but uh, also, I'm going to be out of the state for a month and a half uh, starting uh, early May. So need to have someone in, in the seat. I do have a question for Joni. No, go ahead, yeah. Um, if the person that gets hired decides to back out or they're not a good fit, do we have a, a way to put somebody in quickly to, to fix this or did we start all over again? Not that that would happen, but just curious. Yeah, that's a great question, Malcolm. So we do have a six month probationary period at the city for all new hires, um, which allows um, for both, I think, the uh, staff member and supervisor to determine um, if that's a good fit within those first six months. And I think certainly um, I would um, not want to start this process over again um, within that six months. So that's why I'm maybe being careful and cautious in my fin in the final selection of the, uh, the airport manager. I also um, would not be opposed to looking at um, professional management services of the airport again. If that happened, I think this has actually been um, very helpful to have Jeff here at the airport and certainly um, know that there are resources um, that we could turn to if that happened again. Cool. That, awesome. That's a good question. Okay, cool. Not seeing other comments, Jeff, I'm gonna turn it to you then and let you do some of your updates and undoubtedly we will have questions for you. Thank you, Chairman Earl. Um, I actually don't have a lot on my list since our last meeting. It's uh, been a little bit quiet. Um, for those that are around the airport, the bathroom in my building, uh, the sewer uh, line broke uh, due to age. Um, the FBO, consistent with their agreement, attempted to fix it and had challenges uh, with their contractor. 
So we were able to call the, the city staff in and they were able to fix it uh, in a couple of days. So I think uh, last um, Friday, uh, maybe, maybe over the weekend that uh, got uh, fixed. Um, we did have our triannual maintenance uh, done on the AWAS um, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, and the same day, like hours after they left, uh, the wind sensor broke. Um, Shane uh, with Aerosphere contacted me and says, the wind's blowing one direction, but the uh, AWAS is saying it's blowing the other. So fortunately before that uh, company left town because they're, they're not uh, just right here locally, um, they were able to get back out um, and fix that. Uh, I did learn through the process that our AWAS is the oldest AWAS in the state of Colorado. So in some discussions, uh, when we're going to be looking at how to spend the FAA infrastructure monies of 295, uh, that AWAS may, may need to move up because there are some parts on our AWAS that uh, may not be available uh, if they should break. And certainly we don't want that to happen. Jeff, can you just define AWAS for non-pilots? I'm sorry, uh, automated weather observation system. Thank you. And that's what reports the, the wind, the temperatures, the uh, sky conditions, the wet types of weather uh, at the airport. And you can go online and, and see it digitally. You can listen to it uh, as you're flying in on a radio. Uh, and so it's uh, really created a lot of, uh, eliminated a lot of safety issues at airports uh, of unreported weather conditions. Um, it's uh, very helpful for pilots. Uh, the other strange issue that I've been dealing with, uh, uh, people seem to not be able to find the dog park on the north side of the airport and has been using our south uh, field as a dog park. Uh, each time I've gone over there, uh, they seem to say, well, I've been doing this for 20 years and everyone and no one has said anything or or that or they told me, you know, I was told I could do this. Like, well, no, you can't. It's not a dog park. <laughs> so um, we've got enough small furry animals uh, running around in the airport. We don't need uh, more without a leash. Uh, so that's that's really the you know, not a lot's happened this month. Um, Happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Questions for Jeff? Wow. Your update was so good. Uh, I was gonna say thank you about the animals. I was taxiing and there was a dog running alongside me when he was supposed to be fetching a stick. And um, that's a bit unnerving because the owner was right there. So if anything had happened, it, you know, it would have been, all kinds of bad. And then uh, if anybody's interested, I call the AWAS from my phone a lot of times to listen to it. And it's 303-684-7545. Um, so for those who want, that's on my favorites on my phone before I head over to the airport to hear what's going on. Um, that's pretty interesting that ours is the oldest in the state. So it must have come from when the airport was in Roosevelt Park and they must have moved it out. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Um, thank you for everything you're doing, as always. We just really appreciate um, your attention to detail and getting us through this period and um, really grateful for everything you're doing to get us, get our new hire and get everything positioned so the new hire can come in and start, you know, right at the threshold instead of having to go back and clean up um, things since David's um, absence and so just really grateful for everything you're doing. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Jeff, I'll second that. And uh, since I'm not sure if you'll be with us at our April meeting or not, given your uh, your other priorities, but we really appreciate you coming in and setting us up for a successful path forward with someone permanent. Um, and a lot of those, I, I would call them unpopular actions you've had to take to, to right the ship and, and get us on the right path and really appreciate that. My pleasure. And I hope to be here at April, uh, at least uh, come to one last one with the new airport manager. So. Good. One, well, you're always welcome to come as a member of the public too, and uh, you <laughs> know, give you. us some feedback and tell us how we're doing. So yeah, you can come fuss you at us. Always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else?
Well, then we'll move on. We've got a final public invited to be heard. We've still got the one member on, and I don't know if they, I don't know if the audio was connected or not, honestly. So I'll just pause and see if uh, anyone wants to make a comment from the public. I'm going to take that as a no and move on. But if I did miss again, please interrupt me here and we'll absolutely have a comment. Um, we're on to board, council, and staff comments, and I'll start with board members. Anyone have any comments you'd like to make this evening? Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of my duties from Melinda's list from the last meeting is the squawks about the airport. And one thing I heard um, when I was at the local meeting is several people said that the uh, pattern at the airport, the traffic pattern for the airplane seems to be getting wider and wider and wider. And they think that maybe, well, this is conjecture on their part, but flight schools from Broomfield coming up here to do their touch and goes are flying huge patterns. And so they wanted me to bring that to you guys and uh, figure out how to solve that problem. Yeah, so um, Mr. Robinson, I had a meeting yesterday with uh, one of the airport tenants that had the same concern issue. And it's not just Broomfield instruction, but also Longmont instruction. Um, and, you know, I, I don't listen all the time to Unicom, but uh, I, I do listen to it. I have not heard people getting mad at one another, but he said it happens quite regularly. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing is identifying contact people at all of the flying uh, schools in the Denver area and send to them the uh, pattern information and noise abatement information that we have on the airport's website and make sure that that is you know provided to them and encourage them to you know disseminate to their instructors and, and to their students to try to get a handle of that um, as I know you well know, and I'm sure many of the other board members may or may not know that the city does not control the airspace uh, above our airport. We can't tell people how to fly or where to fly. Uh, that is all under the jurisdiction of the FAA, but we can encourage them to be good neighbors. We can encourage them to operate safely, uh, give them recommendations, um, but uh, we don't have uh, really any enforcement mechanism other than education. I personally uh, just fly 20 miles straight in every time, so I don't have to worry about it. But um, they one suggestion they did have was they thought there was a diagram or picture of the pattern that used to be on the website, and they can't find it now. So is that something, Joni, that we could reinstitute, or maybe you know, Jeff? So it is there. It's just sort of buried. Um, and so in the meeting yesterday I had with the gentleman, he recommended trying to, you know, bring it up a little higher level uh, on the, the front. And uh, so I have that on my notes to do. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, on that topic, Jeff, can I, when, when you have that change and appreciate what you're doing, maybe that's one to highlight in a stakeholder communication as well. Yes. Um, Cause it would also make it very visible that you're, that we're addressing it. You bet. Other board member questions, comments? Council member Martin, anything from you this evening? Not tonight. All right, uh, Talos, yeah. I forgot to say, um, Harrison, you're so kind to say that I participated in the bylaw thing. I did very little compared to how much you did. So thank you for all the work that you did in leading that. So I am not worthy of praise on that effort so thank you well no you you, you are you were you were involved in it but thank you as well for the kind words i appreciate it uh city staff members anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to bring up joni please yeah uh, chairman earl just two things um and you both of these you received via email one from me and one from michelle so one is a survey um, that the clerk's office is asking um, all of the boards and commissions to give some feedback on going back in person 
you know, we do still have potentially autoimmune compromised folks on boards and commissions who may need to look at other options. So we'd like to know so that we're making the best decision for everyone. Um, and as Michelle noted, council is going back in person with masks optional um, based on your comfort on our March 29th meeting. I would anticipate based on what I've heard from you all um, the past few months is you would like to return in person at your April meeting. So that's kind of what I have in my mind. But if you would be able to take the survey, it's only about five or six questions that would be appreciated. And then also today, I know um, last month I wasn't here, but I know Michelle talked a little bit about the new board and commission interview process. And I think she emailed you all kind of the guidelines today. So if you wanna take a look at those, I know that we will be one of the boards who has an open seat that would be doing um, these interviews, I believe in May, Michelle, is that correct? Yeah. Mother yes, that's May. correct. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to make sure you saw both of those items. If you didn't see them or have questions, if you have questions on the border commission interview, please um, email Michelle and she can kind of help walk you through some of those since she will be our, all, everyone's partner in that process. Um, uh, and then the link, if you could do the survey, that would be great. And as I said, I'll anticipate seeing you all in person in April. I had a question. Sorry, I, had, go ahead. I had a question on the interview because um, I did read that my seat is, is up. Um, this is my last year. And having gone through that process and then having interviewed with the city as well, um, I could definitely picture the process myself. So for the, um, as an outgoing board member, is somebody like me going to be in the May interview or just the November interview or how, who decides that? And how do we know um, if we're a part of that process, who, who makes that decision and, and how do we hear about it? That's, you know, just knowing that at some point I probably will be a part of that process because my term is coming up. Do you want to answer that, Tony? Okay. Um, so it's it's up to the board. So as we as we put in here that um, we would recommend doing a subcommittee, maybe two members, and it could be the the chair and the vice chair. It could be the chair and another board member, or it could be the whole board. So that's up to you guys if you want to discuss that at the at the April meeting, um, and vote on that, and and then you could just have the subcommittee interview in May, those applicants that have applied. Michelle, we're, well, the May applicant is solely for our vacancy. Correct. And then Melinda, uh, Steve and I are all, our terms all expire December 31st. So we would yes. be in that November, December timeframe. Right, so then okay. you would have another committee, you could appoint another subcommittee for the end of year so that you guys wouldn't interview yourselves. Um, and then obviously, we go from there so okay. so the interesting so you uh the goal would be to have um board members interviewing for board i am i'm done i've termed out so i'm mm -hmm. in the final days i think steve and harrison you got harrison you must have another term i'm guessing yeah i think, um, I I think so I, I hope so okay good so i'm the only one i'm terming out and so i'm not up for uh, consideration. So I can certainly interview without bias, but also if you want the current board to be a part of that. So that's interesting, the, um, the subcommittee, and we can decide about that and decide within the group. Perfect. Right. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would certainly suggest that's a um, action item on our yeah. agenda for next month to actually decide as a group how we'd like yeah. to proceed with that. Um, Jeff, did I see your hand up a second ago? No, I was just going to ask if a hotel address will count for residency. <laughs> In your case, yes. <laughs> You've got squatters rights. That's who we're talking about. Any, uh, anyone else there? All right. Well, I, I'm through our agenda. We've gotten through all our comments. Um, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for a productive meeting and getting some new bylaws. And we will look forward, Joni, to an update on hiring. Hopefully, when we reconvene next month, we'll, uh, we'll at least have some news and hopefully someone joining us. 
I guess that would be a question is um, when the decision is made and the offer accepted and all the contracts signed, um, could we be notified by email about the decision prior to the meeting? Okay, yeah, absolutely. I will. Okay. As, as, as soon as it's all far enough along that I can do that and HR gives me the green light, I'll okay. make sure that um, the airport board gets the first email. Wonderful. Thank you. Sure. And then, I'll, then I will follow that up fairly shortly in the stakeholder communications. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you both for that. And Jeff, I, I appreciate it. The stakeholder communications you're doing broadly. So yeah. thank you for that. And Joni, Phil, for you guys supporting that and kind of making that a priority for all of us. So thank you. All right. Well, seeing no one else here, we'll go ahead and adjourn for the evening. Thank you all for uh, for joining and we will see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night.